call up Mike Boland and Matt Booth and Charles Laughlin, and, and we'll spend a few minutes, and you know, we, we call this what we learned. That sort of sounds like regurgitating what the teacher told you you should really think about in fourth grade. So I, I like to think about it more in terms of sort of actionable ahas. Uh, my perspective obviously skews mobile as my coverage area, and what I'm seeing is the, the level of discourse in the discussion is evolving, and that's a good thing, because I get frustrated over the last two years or so. A lot of um, events that I go to, and to be frank, you know, sometimes at our events, um, speakers will often um, you know, feign a lot of interest in mobile and, and appear to be very bullish on it. And you know, if I see that damn Mary Meeker slide one more time <laughs> with the intersecting trend lines of you know, mobile web users and desktop web users and it intersects in, in 2015, the point is that that slide and, and the spirit behind that is often where the discussion ends, and that's the why. Um, we're now seeing it evolve into the how, and that's, that's a very good thing. Um, you know, how do we do this? Um, yesterday, we tried to get into a lot of those topics. How do you optimize a mobile landing page? What's working, what's not working? Which calls to action do you surface that are more or less conducive to the actions you want to drive? How does that uh, differ across different verticals? Um, you know, lots, there's a lot there, and of course I won't get into it now, but I'm just, my point is I'm glad we're having that discussion. Yeah. And, and we can all agree that mobile's an opportunity to get over it and move on. Uh, and I, I, that's, I, I maybe go right back to you, Mike, because I, I think you know, there's been a lot of conversation the last two days about performance and how performance advertising is moving forward. And, and I feel like, first of all, there, there are new conversions out there well beyond the click. Yeah. The click isn't the end game. The, the secondary in, action. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. So, so for all you guys, um, how, how do you see, and, and, and based on some of the interesting companies we've seen up here, what really jumps out to you about how performance advertising has taken a next step forward in terms of, of Matt's point about really tailoring a digital solution expressly to a business? Yeah, well, needs? I mean, mobile obviously is kind of the holy grail of that uh, performance-based um, kind of concept because it, it goes with you to the store and the opportunity to bring payments, which is really starting to pick up now. Google just yesterday soft launched their uh, Google Wallet uh, platform, and there are going to be a lot of implementation and um, adoption challenges. It's going to take a few years to really reach ubiquity, but um, I think that that kind of closed loop is an important topic. That's going to be a key topic at our next conference in December in um, San Francisco. But one example, and I gave it yesterday, so I don't want to be too repetitive, is what eBay is doing. Um, and if you kind of triangulate all the acquisitions they've made over the last year, um, it really paints an interesting picture of that closed loop. So you have where which is uh, mm -hmm. distributing mobile ads. We heard from them yesterday. They're bringing people into this funnel. Um, they have the opportunity then to bring in uh, mobile inventory product data through Milo, that acquisition. Um, at the point of sale, they have Red Laser, um, mobile barcode scanning to kind of um, interact with product information at the store level. And then that last inch to the cash register through you know, PayPal, an existing asset. They recently acquired Zong. I'm convinced you're going to see a lot more acquisitions from eBay, both in payments um, and just filling out that circle. Um, and, and I think that not just eBay, but you know, a lot of other larger companies are going to really kind of broaden their assets to basically do that closed loop. That's going to be a theme we see. Yeah. And in terms of the oversupply pro uh, supply problem, Joe Walsh brought up a good point that Consolidation in the marketplace could, you know, solve that to some degree mm -hmm. um, in terms of organizational economies of scale and getting back to positive EBITDA growth in the next couple of years. Um, you know, just in terms of oversupply, kind of on the, you know, direct sales um, side of the equation. I think um, the other bucket there is, is self-serve, which I think, you know, the jury's still out on that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, you know, the needle is certainly moving. You have, you know, generational factors, um, younger, more savvy individuals that are kind of taking over the ranks of SMB ownership, but then you also have, you know, tools in the marketplace um, like, you know, Facebook and uh, the iPhone and things like that. I think it was Peter Horan that raised the point that, you know, at, at City Search they had, you know, all these people that were upload, uploading photos. Um, that's something or that's one part of this, um, you know, value chain which now everyone's comfortable with because they do it every yeah. day on Facebook. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's also lowered barriers to tech, tech, technology itself. I mean, APIs are everywhere to build interesting things on top of we heard from Darby Sieben at um, Yellow Book yep. who's really pioneering the API concept within this kind of uh, directory publishing world. Um, and I think there's a lot to be said for that. Um, you know, it, sometimes the, you know, the higher barrier solution, which everyone's thinking of, there might be something a lot lighter, uh, build something on top of an available API. Um, and that's really just more of a technolo technological issue. Yep. I think that's a good lead.